me. Oh, dude, we got a subscriber, bro. We got a subscriber, and it's not you. There's actually a lot of ASDs, ASDs. There's actually a shit ton of them. That's a little weird. I thought I was the only one. That's one fucking just gonna be snoring the entire fucking time. Gosh darn it! Do you have that? Are you using your your nice mic? Yeah. Do you can set it. See, that's why you got to get a freaking dynamic microphone instead of a freaking cardioid microphone because then you end up with uh, it just it it, it only picks up sound that's very close. It's it's what singers use. So. I think this one does have that power. It has the power. Okay, and I think four four minutes. I got to take my fucking tenders out the fucking oven, brother. Damn, you got some chicken tendies? Fuck yeah, I got some chicken tendies, bitch. Oh yeah, dude. That's good. Oh yeah, dude. Today's gonna be today's my day to have the shirt off. What day is it today? Uh, Wednesday. Oh yeah, it is. I'm a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday type kind of guy. Yep, we have we have split custody of the shirts. Split custody of shirts, boy. All right, I left my fucking nice silver watch at the gym. I'm gonna have to go. I hope nobody stole it. It's only twenty. It's like a thirty dollar watch, but it's sick. Thirty dollars. I know. That's like a. That's like all my money. Okay. The verse of the day is James one twelve. Trials and temptations. Blessed is the man who per perseveres when he is tempted. For when he has been proven, he will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. That's actually pretty per pertinent to how horrible we have been as people. Read that again. I'm going to read the entire James 1, chapter 1. Salutations, chapter 1. Greetings, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes of the dispersion. Greetings, exhortation to practice patience, trials, the test of a faith in progress. My brethren, consider it a cause of great joy whenever you endure various trials, for you know that the testing of your faith will develop perseverance. And let perseverance complete its work so that you may become perfect and complete and not be dis deficient in any respect. A believer's prayer. If someone among you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives, all, who gives to all generously and without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But he is to ask with faith, without doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed about by the wind. A man like that should not think that he will receive anything from the Lord, since he is of two minds and innocent or inconsistent in everything he does. Rich and poor. The brother who is in modest circumstances should take pride in being raised up. Likewise, the one who is rich should glory in being brought low. For he will disappear like a flower of the field. Once the sun comes up with its scorching rays and withers the grass, its flowers droop and its beauty vanishes, so too the rich man will fade away in the midst of his affairs. Trials and temptations. Blessed is the man who perseveres when he is tempted. For when he has been proven, he will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Damn, brother. While experiencing temptation, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself tempts no one. Rather, temptation occurs when someone is attracted and seduced by his own desire. Then the desire conceives a birth to sin. And that sin, when it reaches full growth, gives birth to death. Dang light and life do not be deceived my beloved brethren every good act of giving and every perfect gift are from above 
coming down from the Father of all light. With him, there is no altercation. Oh, there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. By his own choice, he gave birth. He gave us birth through the way of truth, so that we may be kind of first fruits of all he- of all his creation. I need to go get my tenders out. All right. I mean, we could probably pause the stream, but I don't think you can actually do that. No, just say what you feel about that. Well, I feel like his he has the diet of a 12-year-old kid on Adderall that is self-conscious about his weight. Um, chicken tenders, frozen chicken tenders, as he says, poke bowls. Poke bowls. Poke, not poke bowls, poke bowls. Poke bowls. Poke bowls. And... Uh, and his own semen. It's most of his diet, actually. Because if you actually waste your own semen, it's actually a bad idea. You should actually eat your own semen. Um, if you're going to come, you need to you need to keep it inside your body. It's it's vril. It's holy energy. You got to keep it inside. So if you do come, Dude, you shut should. up, Seth. Shut yeah. up. Yeah. This is why the coin says I should stop talking to you. I think it is, dude. I think it is actually why it's because I, I, I'm, I, I'm leading you, leading the viewers astray right now. Don't eat your own cum. Shut up. That was satire. Shut the fuck up. We're doing a Bible speed, dickhead. Yeah, but you also said a bunch of curse words. I'm pretty sure you could have satire in a Bible stream. I'm saying don't masturbate under any circumstance. Don't do it. Just stop talking about it, you idiot. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, shut the fuck up. I'm just saying, how about you come and make me, you, you child of God? You sinner. Nobody's sinning harder than you right now, you fag. That's not true. You're eating freaking chicken tenders, dude. I'm pretty sure that should be a sin. Wow, how is eating chicken tenders a sin? Because that's for twelve-year-old kids. When you once you get past the age of like twenty, you should stop eating frozen chicken tenders. You start making your own food like a man. Hey, guess what? I'm having a what? little snacky poo. You faggot. Let's see. You shouldn't be saying that. This is a Bible stream. What do you eat? Let's let's see. Let's let's see what you're eating. I want to see it. I want to see the quality of these chicken tenders, dude. They're really high quality chicken tenders. They're not even chicken tenders. They're like chicken breasts that are panko breaded. Huh? And they're freezer stuff. But but they're not they're they're not they're not cooked, so they're 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 like raw. They're high well, quality cook, shit, brother. So you cook them in the microwave? No, I cook them in the fucking oven like a fucking grown adult. Okay, so that's a little bit better. I thought you were just throwing this shit in the in the microwave like a baby. No, I'm fucking eating these shits from the. I'm, they have to cook in the oven for thirty minutes. Okay, so I guess you're kind of you're not even you're not making your own food, but you're at least cooking it. Yeah, I'm you're not, not even like pre-made freaking Tyson. No, they're not like Dino Nuggies, bro. I will still eat a Dino Nug. I'm not above a Dino Nuggie, but yeah, I don't think anyone's necessarily above that. But if you go to the store and you purposely buy Dino Nuggies more than twice a year, you have an issue. But twice a year is okay. Yeah, twice a year. I mean, maybe three times a year if you're, but you're pushing it. I guess I can see how that would be accurate. You need to figure your shit out if you're going to eat Dino Nuggies consistently. Seriously. Well, this is a body built by Dino. Maybe if you ate more Dino Nuggies, you wouldn't be a little midget. I don't know if that's actually factual. I think that Dino Nuggies would mess you up more. I think Dino Nuggies would make me unhealthier and fat. Well, guess what? I'm 6'6", and I ate Dino Nuggies and mangoes and cashews, bitch. Yeah, you know, when's the last time you ate, like, when's the last time you ate Dino Nuggies consistently? Probably when I was at Maryland playing football. Okay, well, that was, like, years ago. Not to mention your height is your freaking genetics, 99% of it. No, 99% was probably the Dino Nuggets. I know. I don't think that's the case. I don't know. I, I actually am positive that that was the case. You sound was, like you're a rep for, like, like, like Tyson. Like, you sound like you're a Tyson rep. Is Dino Nuggets a Tyson thing? I think they are. I think that the, I think most chicken, most uh, pre-made hey, freaking chicken. Pull it is up. Pull it up, Seth. Pull it up. 
No, you fucking pull it up. I'm not pulling. I'm not the fucking. Pull it up. No, I'm not the. I'm not the fucking Google bitch, dude. Pull it up, bitch. Pull it okay, up, I'll pull bitch. it up. All right. Let's see. <laughs> he said, "I'm it's not the Google nice bitch." And... Fuck. All right, I'll pull it up. Because <laughs> I'm actually curious. It's like nobody's ever googled that before. Um, better oh, yet, yep, ask, yep, I know. Yep, yep, yep. It is fucking Tyson Foods. Better yet, ask the fuck. We should have asked the coin. No, yeah, that's true, but it, it is Tyson Foods. Dino Fun Nuggets, Tyson Foods. You should What's look up? at that. That's 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 a delicious little piece of chunk of chicken right there. What's it? Is it is it fried? No, it's just panko breaded. It's it's baked in the oven. What are the? I know, but what are the ingredients in it? Is it like vegetable oil? I don't know. Packaging is all the way to the back of my fucking kitchen. Oh. I'm not saying you're not getting a body like this on freaking hydrogenated vegetable oil. That's for damn sure. Yeah, I don't want a little gay midget body. Sorry. Yeah, but you can't tell that I'm short behind the camera, and that's what matters. That's why I stay seated. <laughs> that's why I stay seated and have the camera at a low angle. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So I look like I'm tall, but it the thing is, more this is domineering. This is actually only five inches above the ground. It's just it's a, it's an optical illusion. <laughs> I actually cut a hole in the floor just so I could put my camera in it, and it appeared like I'm much taller than I really am. Mm. Look at those traps, dude! Oh, this lighting's sick. You actually. Are devoid of traps. You don't have traps. That's not true, dude. I have. I definitely have traps. It's the camera angle. Look at that. The traps those are, are this big. Those are traps, dude. Oh, I'm cramping. Those are not traps. Oh, I'm cramping. <laughs> those are traps, brother. He said, "Oh, I'm cramping." <laughs> Welcome to the trap, dog. I am actually wearing uh, nipple stickers, so I'm not technically shirtless. All right, enough of this faggotry. Let's read the Bible. <laughs> I have my aloe plant. Look at this freaking sorry aloe plant, dude. One second. Yeah, okay, I only got a couple. And then let's you start Look reading. A sorry a ass aloe plant, bro. This is thing sorry. Is not you you should start start after I finish this uh verse of the day. You should you should start reading uh Genesis. Back where we're we left Genesis, off. We're gonna, we're gonna start at Genesis uh nine, I think is what it, what, what we left Yeah, off. I believe you're correct about that. But and I'm gonna read Ephesians 18 18. Okay, yeah, Ephesians eighteen eighteen. Wait, that's what we're ending with. Yep, we're gonna end with that. We're gonna end with that prayer. No, no, no. Jeremiah eighteen eighteen. Jeremiah eighteen eighteen. I'm I'm curious to see what's in Ephesians eighteen eighteen. Now that I said that, I feel like the I feel okay, like let me finish with let me finish with this one. Okay, exhortation to patience, faith, to practice faith, living by God's word. Remember this, my beloved brethren. Everyone should be quick to listen, but slow to speak and slow to anger. For human anger does not bring about the righteousness of God. Therefore, rid yourself of everything sordid and every wicked excess, and welcome in all humility the word that is implanted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not just hearers who only deceive themselves. For anyone who listens to the word and fails to do it like someone who looks at his face in a mirror. After seeing his reflection, he goes off and immediately forgets what he looked like. However, the one who looks intently at the perfect law of freedom and preserves, not for, and persevere, no, preserve, no, persevere, no, pers perseveres, I think it's perseveres, uh, and perseveres, not forgetting what he has heard, but putting it into practice will be blessed in everything he does. If anyone thinks that he is religious, but does not restrain his tongue, he is deceiving himself, and his religion is worthless. Religion that, our God, that God our Father accepts as pure and undefiled in this, to come to the aid of orphans and widows 
in their hardships and to keep oneself untarnished by the world. So literally, this just said uh, that we were a bunch of sinners because we read the Bible and then we went on that tangent where we were, we were just cursing and then you were talking about fucking disgusting stuff. I'm cursed again. I can't stop cursing. Well, dude, that's uh, actually that, that is actually really profound. Um, that's very profound, dude. And who wrote that? This one was, I, I believe, James one. Yep, James. Dude, that is one. so freaking. That is such a profound verse, dude. That is such a profound verse because I always freaking struggle with that, especially trying to be funny and stuff like that. Trying to be funny, and it's just so hard to not be vulgar and to not be a little bit sacrilegious in your speech, especially if you're trying to get people to laugh. You're trying to say funny. Well, stuff also, the way felt. the way that we're like the way that we were essentially like like trial by fire, both of us in different ways. But like the way that we grew up, like me always in an athletic, like always doing something athletic, like in a locker room, like and being in college playing sports, and then like you being in the military, like it's almost impossible not to be like cursing and like talking shit and like you know doing like fucked up things. Sorry, fudge, fudged up things. Um. Like it's almost impossible because all the humor is dark humor. All the humor is like, you know what I mean? All of it's like that. Well, it's because there's so many things like it's, you know, when you're going through sh horrible things and you're suffering a lot, um, normally that's, you know, that's where kind of humor comes from. But, uh, but yeah, dude, no, that's freaking, that, that is absolutely a profound freaking verse, man. That's, and that, it's a good, it sets a good tone too. Uh, it's almost like that was meant to be freaking read. Because they're about to read the Bible. It's saying if you don't live it out, and if you just listen to it and you don't actually live it out, it's your religion's worth freaking nothing. So that yeah. is like something that I really struggle with because sometimes I feel like reading the Bible's enough. Um, and it it is good because it sets a tone sometimes for the rest of the day. It puts you in a good mindset. But if you're not actually living it out, then um, then that is basically worthless. So And like that's why, you know, like what the time that we're in right now, like Lent, it's such a good thing because it gives you like now you should in a perfect world you should be doing this your whole life but everybody knows that's impossible not to sin and it's impossible not to be tempted but lent puts it puts gives you like uh not really an ultimatum but a challenge it gives you a challenge that for a set amount of time you have to give something up like give something up and be better this amount of time and then hopefully by the end of that time it'll just become a uh it'll just become what's it called it'll become habit yeah become a habit so it'll become a habit like with us like we're not drinking not doing anything like i'm not doing any stimulants i'm not doing any like of any kind like nothing and i wish that i was even better than that and i hadn't and i wasn't freaking busting and whatnot but like that part was like i don't know I, like we're at least we're on, we're on the right path and we're trying to do something bigger than ourselves and we're doing it for god and for jesus christ and we're trying to better ourselves and hopefully it'll become a habit and we'll never have to do those things again and we'll like never have to be tempted by those like unnecessary like mind altering flesh altering states because it's not a soul altering state it's just a flesh altering state well i mean i do agree but i also well I agree, but I also think I, I think we're always going to be tempted. I don't think that's necessarily the point. It's just like we're. It's kind of like a, just like fasting, you know. Fasting is is is, a, is is talked about a lot in the Bible. Brings you closer to God. Um, abstinence from things, especially something as important as food and what and whatnot, does strengthen the spirit. Um, also, it's good for your body as well. Just like cleansing yourself, your dopamine receptors and stuff like that of porn, though, like you know, it's still an issue, but. 
um, porn, your phone, whatever social media apps you might be abstaining from, just all these different things, these worldly things, abstaining from them from, from Lent toughens your soul. It makes you stronger. It makes you more spiritually more tough. It's like spiritual fitness. It's good for your brain. It's good for your yeah, mind. It's good for your spiritual body. willpower. Yeah. So there's a lot of different purposes for it. Um, so, yeah, th there's a lot of different purposes for it. Um, I think we were in uh, – okay, so actually we were at uh, – we were in Genesis 12. Yeah. I said nine before I were 12. So I'll get to reading. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran. And they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem as far as a terebinth tree of Moreh, and the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel, and he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called in the name of the Lord. So Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. Abram in Egypt. Now there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to dwell there, for the famine was severe in the land. And it came to pass when he was close to entering Egypt that he said to Sarai, his wife, Indeed, I know that you are a woman of beautiful countenance. Therefore it will happen when the Egyptians... Oh, we already read this. We already read this. Um, his wife ends up getting taken by the Pharaoh, and there's a bunch of curses that get laid on Pharaoh. And his the Pharaoh's like, what the heck, dude? You didn't tell me that this was your wife. And he's like, oops. And then so they freaking kicked Sarai out. And then uh, Abram and uh, Sarai end up dipping. So I'm just going to skip to 13. Um, so I just I just kind of summarized what happens next. Uh, freaking the Pharaoh's like, you know, I don't know if they were having I mean, sex you can, or anything you, you like can that. read it. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, I'm just going to skip past because you already read it. But 13. Abram inherits Canaan. So after all that, after Sarai gets taken, and then all the plagues happen on Pharaoh's house, and they get kicked out, and they're like, okay, where do we go now? Well, Abram inherits Canaan. Then Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him to the south. Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver and in gold. And he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Lot also, who went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. Now the land was not able to support them that they might dwell together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. The Canaanites and the Perizzites then dwelt in the land. So Abram said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me. And between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren. Is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I'll go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So this was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as you go towards Zoar. Then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east. So... Lot chose the good spot because he had first dibs. And they separated from each other. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the end of the plain and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. And the Lord said to Abram, After Lot had separated from him, lift your eyes now. Okay, I'm going to stop right there because that's interesting. So he goes to the place that's like the most well off. And it's the most sinful to the Lord. 
So like, you know, that saying like good times create hard men, hard men create good times, good to, good times create soft men, soft men create hard times. You notice that like in, in, in land of plenty, you end up with a lot of spiritual decay and people doing really a lot of debauchery and stuff like that. Kind of like, like what's happening in the United States right now, like what happened mm -hmm. in Greece, like what happened in Rome. Yep. Really interesting stuff. So, um, and the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward. So, northward. Northward. So, southward. So, eastward. What? So, like we've talked, I think we've talked about this on the stream before that history is cyclical and that it repeats itself and that there's always trends. And there's cyclical actions that happen. Seems that in like biblical prophecy, the only thing to break that trend is revelation. The second coming of Christ and the war where they reset, where they reset humanity like it's been done before. Well, kind of, yeah, but it's like not necessarily revelation, but it's like, um it's like, like so, revelation what, well what he does is what and places end up getting really bad god basically destroys everybody in some in some fashion and then he leaves a remnant the small group of people left over either the people's kids or whatever and then that small seed ends up flourishing into something great that's something great decays into something bad god sends some sort of destruction upon those people lather rinse repeat so There's no breaking that cycle, it seems. Not until God, not until Jesus comes a second time. That's what I just said, you motherfucker. No, well, you said it's cyclical, and you said that's what happens. Never mind. Just keep reading. I guess I didn't understand what you were saying. That's all right. Let's keep reading. Um... Yeah, you're right. I am retarded. Um, and I will make your descendants... Oh, wait, what says right here? For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Then Abram moved his tent and went and dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and built an altar there, to the Lord. And another thing that these people do is you see is they build altars to the Lord. Um they don't just show up and be like, cool, this is this is dope. No, they actually dedicate the place to God, which is interesting. You have any more sidebar comments? I feel like that can you hear me? Yeah. I feel like building that altars like can lead to like you know how you see in a lot of churches like an excess of like gold and wealth and like you know what i mean like figure figurines and shit like kind that of, you know like catholic churches in all churches yeah but that, that's true like really big churches like mega churches too i find it disgusting oftentimes and like I'm pretty sure it says in the Bible that like the way the way of Jesus Christ is not the way of gold and silver and jewels and or whatever it says. Like Jesus doesn't need gold and silver to be worshipped. And it said I remember reading with you a few like a couple weeks, maybe a month a couple months ago. Like go into your go into your house, go into your room, close the door behind you, and pray. Because you don't need to show everybody else that you're praying or show everybody what you're praying for. That connection only has to be between you and God, and you and Jesus Christ. So, some of that stuff where they're like building altars and building shrines and taking gold and making golden crosses and all that stuff it seems a little bit like 
not just unnecessary, but like against what the teachings of God are. Yeah, and I and this so this isn't really saying that he's like making some I, I get what you're saying, but it doesn't saying it's not saying like he's making some fantastic altar. Like he's saying he just made an altar. Like he just made like a little a little a little dedication to the Lord. And there is something to be said about there is something to be said about that, I think. Um I, I think that obviously like what the fuck do I know? Like what do I know? Like I don't I'm definitely not like the 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 expert here, but I, I think that there is something to be said about dedicating a lot of your time and resources to showing God that you know it's just kind of, it's just kind of like another one of those things where you're kind of worshiping God. You're creating a little worshiping point, something that's beautiful, something that is aesthetically pleasing, something that took a lot of money to make, which is hard for you to get something that took a lot of energy to make, which is hard for you to do and kind of setting that aside and, uh, and, and dedicating that to the Lord. I think there is something to be said about that, but I think that there is a line that you cross when you make a giant mega church and you create it just to make people in awe. Like, wow, look at this giant church that I created. Everybody come here and look at it. Like, I, I, I don't know. I, I think that there is kind of a line to be that, that, that tends to be crossed there. I don't know if he. I don't know if Lot's crossing that line right here, because um, he's saying which uh, he built an altar there to the Lord. You know that's. So I'm not sure, but I, I, I have the same issue that you have, oftentimes. I mean, you see it all throughout the world. I mean, some of them aren't adorned with like the gold and stuff, but for the time, like I've been to a couple of churches like humongous churches around the world and like they're gorgeous like the stained glass like the gothic architecture like sacre coeur and notre dame and like all these giant like very very uh well-known churches they're gorgeous and like you can definitely feel a. Uh, you can you feel something when you go in there. I don't know if it's necessarily God, but like you definitely feel like you kind of like a like an oh crap moment where it's like, dang, this was built by like a whole bunch of people who worshipped who worshipped God during a time where God was like really the only truth because there was no like there was no computers, there was no cranes building this sh stuff like these were people hand making like giant 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 churches and building these beautiful stained glass windows and like putting everything together and then it getting destroyed or ran or ransacked and then rebuilding it so you can definitely feel something there but some of the more modern stuff where you just see like a whole bunch of like go gold like and like like passing like the like the massive amount of like money that's given and like taken from the church i don't know well and there's also like a lot of that stuff people all made that by hand like they did it themselves um a lot of blood sweat tears and artistic creativity went into that and uh with the stuff now it's like they just go to the store and they buy stuff they have or they could them. hire somebody who doesn't even believe in god contract somebody who doesn't even believe in god to build it yeah, I mean, they just they just hire some construction company, um, and it's all prefabricated materials. And there's not a whole lot of like, uh, it's not like an artisanal craft. Yeah. But yeah, those churches. I mean, because it's like, our God is amazing. Our God is beautiful. We come here and worship Him. Let's make this place where we worship Him. Let's dedicate this and make this place as beautiful as possible. And that's cool. But the churches now, they're not beautiful churches. Like, it's not no, a like modern and ugly and barren and and square. And yeah. you go and they have freaking drums. Or they're like giant circles. Yeah, they're just not very appealing. They're not they're not beautiful. No, like the ones back in the day, like like those ones in like France and Italy and 
and like places like in Europe where there's like more history, those are some pretty beautiful structures, like gorgeous structures where you're like, whoa, like you walk around like random places in like Southern France and like, there's just like this crazy, and some of those churches aren't adorned with all this gold and embroidered silk and all this stuff. Some of these are just like literally like stone structures, like Gothic stone structures that you walk into and inside there's like the literal skeletons of dead saints or like dead priests from the church. And they're just like sitting in glass enclosements, like just skeletons sitting there, like a whole body of a skeleton of a saint just sitting there. Which is like pretty crazy. You don't see that here. No, we have a weird relationship with death too. And not to mention like people here just, uh, they just ain't about it like that. Um, like those buildings took hundreds of years to make oftentimes. Um, yeah. And a lot of times they're destroyed and had to be rebuilt. Yeah. Here, like they put them up in, a, in, in six months and they just pay a bunch of freaking, uh, immigrants to put it up at the, the you know for 12 bucks an hour yeah 16 bucks an hour 20 bucks an hour whatever um and there's not a whole lot of, they don't even do that they they pay the contractor and then the contractor pays the the immigrants yeah exactly there's no love and care or that that's put into it there's no slavery <laughs> yeah it's saying uh and he well it's saying right here lot actually built the altar so Law didn't contract some Canaanite immigrants to freaking build it at, at uh, for dollars, you know, for pennies on the dollar. But um, so let's do Law's captivity and rescue, and we'll probably call it good. Okay. I like the whole like not reading necessarily as much because you can stop, talk about it, absorb all the information. Lots captivity and rescue, unless you want to read more, because we still have to read Jeremiah eighteen eighteen. Not yeah, not Jeremiah. Yeah, it is Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Um, and it came to pass in the days of Am Am Amraphel, king of Shinar, Arioch, king of Elastar. Oh, this is a hard one. Chedorlaomer, 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 king of Elam, and Tidal, king of nations, that they were made war with Berah, king of Sodom. Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, Shemeber, king of Zebolam, and the king of Bela, that is, Zawar. All these joined together in the valley of Sidim, that is, the Salt Sea. Twelve years they served Chedorlamer, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. In the fourteenth year of Chedorlamer and the kings that were, in the, that were with him and attacked the Rephaim, in Ashtaroth Karmaim, the heck, I feel like I'm reading the Torah right now. The Zuzim in Ham, the Emim in Shavak Kiriathiyim, and the Horites in their mountain of Sair, as far as El Paran, which is by the wilderness. Then they turned back and came to En Mishpat and attacked all the country of the Am Amalekites and also the Amorites who dwelt in Hazazam Tamar. And the king of Sodom, King of well, the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, and the king of Adma, the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela went out and joined together in battle in the valley of Sidim against Chedorlamer, the king of Elam, Tidal, king of nations, Amaraphel, king of Shinar, and Ariak, king, king of Elasar. Four kings against five. Now the valley of Sidim was full of asphalt pits, and the king of so Sodom and Gomorrah fled. Some fell there. And the remaining fled to the mountains. Then they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their provisions and went their way. They also took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods and departed. Dang. They just took his shit and ran. Yeah, so Lot picked the area that, that he thought would be the best because it was the most fertile. It turned out to be the most sinful, and he got his he got it, he got pillaged. Then one who had escaped came and told Abram the Hebrew, for the for he dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mam Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshkal and brother of Aner. I know it sounds kind of repetitive to talk about this, but 
they're pretty much just lending credence to the story by giving like this guy who's you know what i mean they're like this guy who's the brother of this guy who was the son of this guy like this happened there but so it's like kind of lends credence to the story and that they actually knew what was happening it's all just you know receipts um and they were allies with Abram. Now when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his 318 trained servants who were born in his own house. Dang, so that guy must have been there a minute if he had if he had 318 servants. Like, this guy wasn't a poor dude. Um, well, also, have... these people, I'm pretty sure, were still living like... Wait, were these people still living like a hundred... Or like hundreds of years? Or this was this after... Their I think that they were still living. Capped. I think they were still living a while. Okay. And went in pursuit as far as Dan. Freaking Dan. He divided his forces against them by night, and he took. I'm sorry, and he and his servants attacked them and pursued them as far as Huba, which is north of Damascus. So he brought back all the goods and also brought back his brother Lot and his goods as well as the women and the as well as the women and the people. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Sheve, that is the king's valley. After his return from the defeat of Chedorlamer and the kings who were with him. Oh wait. And the kings who were with him. Abram and Mizedek, Mel, Mel, Melchizedek. Man, these names are freaking a tongue twister, dude. Abram and Melchizedek. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God Most High, and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. You know what a tithe is? I think everyone knows. Now the king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the persons and take the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord, God most high, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap, and that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you should, stay, lest, lest you should say, I have made Abram rich. So he doesn't want to be indebted to anybody. Except only what the young men have eaten and the portion of the men who went with me. Aner, Eshkol, and Mamer, let them take their portion. So, I notice that's the theme too. It's like, everyone's like, wow, dude, all these people got destroyed. It's like, you know God, not necessarily, not always by the good things that he does, but by just like the horrible stuff that happens. Or like you winning battles that because he only had three hundred and some dudes. He actually, Who was he it Carl Yoon? Was it Carl Yoon? Carl Carl it, Young. Um, however you say Yoon Yun. J U N G. No, Y U N. Hmm. Or Y U N N. Carl Yoon. I think it's Yoon. Are you um, talking about the guy that Jordan Peterson always references? Um. I don't know, but he says that uh, people don't often find God because they don't look low enough. That's interesting. Yeah, Cole Yoon isn't a guy. You're thinking Young, J-U-N-G. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, modern man can't see God because he doesn't look low enough. Yeah, that was Cole, Cole Young. Why J U N G? J U N G. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then then little actions here and there instead of just massive. Like when I was in jail, I heard this one freaking guy tell a story. Of uh, he said that, or was whatever. So he asks one of the war the wardens. He's like, "How do you know God exists?" And he says. And it was, it's kind of stupid, but he's like, because squirrels have fluffy tails. And it kind of sounds a little ridiculous, kind of sounds stupid, but it's like, you know, it's like you look at a cute animal, like a little cute squirrel, and it's like, of course God exists. That's a little cute animal, right? Like like finding God and just like the most simple little things. It's like just, just how beautiful nature is. Just like 
the 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 how much you enjoy the the crisp summer air, like the crisp morning you know spring air you're just like this is beautiful this is great i love it outside and it's just little things like that that make you just feel like this there's just something i don't know that that this it's 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 just beautiful you know i don't think i feel like beauty and appreciation of the of those things can't really exist unless you believe in a god who purposely designed it you know because that's what gives it beauty if 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 everything's by accident and there's nothing, no significance, then what the heck is beauty? You know, I don't know. What's what's cute? What's adorable? What's beautiful? What's what is any? Well, of that? that's what we're kind of getting into in our society now. Is that people are like, oh, well, being yourself is beautiful, and like, and expressing who you truly are is beautiful. And it's like, no, um, actually expressing yourself the way god intended you to be is beautiful not not fulfilling your earthly desires and your fleshly desires and your desires to be sinful and uh like infidelous like yeah and it's like oh you think that you putting your you think that you putting your junk inside of another man's or somebody's anus is beautiful like that's what makes you beautiful is your sexuality it's like oh you have an obscure sexuality it's like that's beautiful it's like no that's not disgusting you know what i mean it's yeah but it's like or like you you being a quirky sagittarius is is, is a beautiful thing it's like no it's like most people people just it's because it, it's just it's just weird man like or like yeah yeah oh sh Oh, they them is beautiful because they express they sell. Yeah, they express they sell. Yeah, because it's just like mm, no. no, actually, you're just being uh, you just lack moral fidelity to your own soul and to God. You're just like, you're you, an abomination. You lack so much structure in your life that you wish that you were somebody else because you lack so much structure in your own life and you lack God in your own life. Yeah, and it's weird how they flip that because it's like, like love who you are. It's like, well, this person can't even look in the mirror and, and love who they are so much the fact that they have to cut off their genitals or say oh, that we they're have to, But people. we have to love them for who they are. Exactly. It's like you don't even love yourself enough to, to admit that you like to – You don't, you don't even, even love, love yourself enough to be yourself. Yeah, exactly. Right there. Boom. You don't even love yourself just to be yourself. You have to be you have to try to be somebody else in order for you to think that you might gain love for yourself, even though you never will, because if you never find God, then you will never find yourself and you will never find love for yourself. Well, yeah. And it's like people always want to find I don't know, because I've been on this 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 problem, too. It's like, who am I? Who am I? And it's like a lot of it is kind of a decision, right? You decide who you are. I mean, you can fall to your most most primal instincts, which is wanting to go to the bars and get drunk, sleep with random people, give in to your weird desires, and just be a product of society. And you can be that person who's all those things, or you can decide based off of what you know to be true and good and bright. You can decide to be that person who exemplifies those characteristics. Um, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read some of my writing. All right. I'm what is what I was, i'm gonna grab some water i can hear you okay this is directly related to what seth was just talking about of trying to find yourself and how you can find yourself what is a responsibility a call to action first one must mentally delineate that the expenditure of time the currency of life and energy the currency of the universe is beneficial Next, moral justification is required for action to take place. People often make immoral actions routine and enjoy it for the moment. However, the subsequent physical and emotional pain our bodies experience as humans and the spiritual and conscientious pain from our soul become so great that they either drive us further towards Satan or allow us to evaluate and address our sinful infidelity. Once moral justification is provided, subsequent physical action is required to fulfill a responsibility. The human body and spiritual essence are completely different planes of existence. 
That continued immoral action causes the network of people around you to backfire and attack, sending he humans deeper into a hypothalamic response. And with positive action comes positive returns. Energy is transferred through electrons and with positive connections often come neutral and sometimes positive responses. You must dissociate your, from your physical body and enter into your spiritual mind. Everyone has the power to pray and self-evaluate no matter how daunting that task may seem. You must truly understand who you currently are in order to understand and begin to shape the person you wish to become. The only way to do this is to put yourself in God's shoes. If I look at my actions of yesterday, today, tomorrow, just as God does every day, what would he say? And almost more importantly, what would you say about that person? If you are able to look at yourself as the stranger you are and truly evaluate your thoughts, morality, and actions, this practice will not only help you understand the person you wish to become, but the person God has designed you to be. If your answer is self-disillusioned moral grandeur, then you are certainly on the wrong path as I was, but it isn't too late. You are as great as you think you are, but your own ego and moral decrepitude can easily destroy that which you wish to achieve. God and the world owe you nothing, and you owe everything to God and the rest of his creation especially because in the deep recesses of everyone's mind, they see their potential because you have done it before. God is all knowing. There is no exception. Everything that has happened will just as everything that will happen has your journey, your success, your morality is only reviewed through the wisdom of God and your eternal soul. It is immeasurably difficult to carve a statue and even harder when you don't know what that rock looks like to begin with. Without dissociated thought, you are shaping yourself as a blind man with one hand would shape a statue. You can only feel one part of the rock at a time. However, you know that the whole statue must be completed. You oftentimes can't, won't, or don't see your own failures and triumphs because of your lack of observable space and ability to observe your space. But in the back of your mind, you have a vision of the finished product, not an exact vision, but a blueprint of what you current, currently believe you want, of what you currently believe you want. Be patient. Your selfish and societal manifestations of who you think you should, will, and strive to be are often not what God has intended for you. This can be a hard pill to swallow. However, if you open your mind to what God has in store for you, he will certainly reveal the responsibilities he has delegated to you on your path to fulfillment. These revelations can come as a punch in the face or a small saying or phrase that you wouldn't think twice about. In order to receive God's messages, you must first create an open line of communication through prayer. Have faith in God and believe that nothing is stronger than the power of God within you. Faith is belief without evidence. We have no physical evidence that God is watching us or that, the pe or that good people go to heaven and bad people go to hell. However, once you open that line of communication with God through prayer and self-reflection, it is impossible to deny the effects of the vocalization between you, God, and your conscience, the part of God that lives within us all. God's existence is impossible for believers and practitioners to deny because of the feeling that a simple prayer can induce. Whenever I pray, wherever and whatever I pray for, I always hear and feel a response. Prayer not only brings you closer to God, but also brings you closer to your true self and forces you further from the sins of your past or the transgressions of your future. I'll stop there. So obviously there's like there's a lot of things in there um and just for everyone's so just fyi um this is a little off topic real quick but our streams have actually gotten we've had a total of 200 views 200 last, views yeah on our last two streams combined are you serious yeah i'm totally serious I'm looking at it right now so people are actually watching this so um 
so do you know the stream that we said we thought we were talking to people? It looks like we were. That's that's wild. Um, so really, yeah, yep. Um, so I was gonna say because there's obviously a lot to pick apart there, and just so everyone knows, like this is something that he wrote himself before he actually ever read the Bible. He kind of like he had like a little schizo. Hey, that's break. crazy. We did have we did have sixty four views on the last one, and then a hundred and thirty four views on the one. That's crazy, dude. Yeah, isn't that cool, man? That's fucking. That's nuts. Yeah, that's cool, dude. The one where we had the girl on got the most views, unfortunately. That's pretty cool, dude. That we get that we had that many views. Yeah, and you know, obviously, like obviously, we're not like the most moral righteous, whatever. So, but. Um, that is, uh, that's just freaking wild, dude. I mean, obviously, cause you didn't like, now you're starting, I feel like understand what you wrote a little bit more. I don't know. I'm starting like, now that I'm digging into Bible more and I'm actually like praying more and all this kind of stuff, like just a lot of those things make more sense. Um, but like what you were saying about, you were trying to find yourself and you were trying to, like, you were trying to figure out who you were and figure out who you are. Like in order to do that, you can't, you can't do that by just viewing yourself from your own eyes no. you have to take a step back spiritually yep and like we can joke all we want about like you should astral project out of your body and <laughs> and view your life but like legitimately like not astral project but you should spiritually take a time and reflect on your actions reflect on the actions of others and uh understand that your life and your desires are not what's important yeah what's in, what's important is your fidelity like what's important is your congruence your responsibility to, your, to god your yeah, responsibility your, to god is what's important yeah and then that kind of goes into what we were saying too like like exactly like you said finding yourself and all these people who are like i'm like you know like finding beauty in themselves and all this kind of stuff everything's just so self-centered like there's so much like most of the beauty out there isn't in ourselves right it's like it's like i feel like it's just there's so much of a focus to try to create beautiful things out of just ugly ugly shit um instead of just looking and pulling from the uh, from all the beautiful things that already exist but i don't know like like, that's interesting because you, you're also saying like prayer and all that kind of stuff um i'm getting a little bit nervous because i know we actually have a little bit of an audience dude. I'm like, oh shit, what do I say? What do I say? <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, but uh, no, dude. It's because like like I like you you don't don't look at like exactly what. So I just I'm I'm kind of all over the fucking place right now. Um, but I was listening to a podcast earlier and it was saying to take a step back and to take an actual and AA talks about this as well, to take like an actual moral inventory of yourself. And to do that, you actually have to take a step back and put things on freaking paper. And obviously I'm not like the best poster child for anything, but what's been helping me personally now, and, and what I've realized I really need to do is actually, cause I, I've been sitting here wondering like, oh, I have all this scattered thoughts in my head and I always feel like I'm, I'm at a, in, in battle with my head. And so I find myself having to actually talk to myself out loud to be able to actually have a cordial conversation with my inner conscience because I have so many different things in my mind that I feel like are always interjecting and are always trying to freaking jump in and trying to freaking ruin the conversation. So I actually have to verbalize it. And a step above that is actually putting it down to actually cut through the noise and to actually put your thoughts down on paper, who you are as a person, what you want out of life, all this kind of stuff and pray about it too. Praying about it, putting that, like separating yourself, which is, you know, to separate yourself, you you can't just be in your own head. You like, I find you have to actually put it on paper, or sometimes literally have an actual verbal conversation with yourself. Yeah, well, not, not just yourself too, but have a verbal conversation with God. Exactly, but like out loud. Yeah, know? out loud. And I, I was just watching. Um, before we hopped on this, I was watching uh, Jadeon stream. Uh, he's like a super famous YouTuber. I don't know if you know who that is, but he's a mm -hmm. super famous YouTuber. He's a prankster. Uh, he's re he's really really funny, but he's also um, he also like preaches like stuff that goes on like writings from the Bible as well. And what's funny is that you said that, and his big thing on his stream was um, like the words that you speak speak life. Uh, 
like speak actions into life. So like whether you speak good or evil, you speak those things, those things will come to you. Yeah. So like speaking it, and there's a difference between like speaking, there's we think that there's a difference between talk and action, but talk uh, catalyzes action. And it action, can. I mean, some people are just some people are all talk, but yeah, you're right. It does. But it whether does. that whether it's bit whether it's the people who are acting or somebody acting after you speak, like somebody acting upon you after you speak. Well, yeah, because so, you're putting that energy out into the world, right? You're you're putting that you're putting your words out into the world. Yeah. And then it's energy that doesn't go away. Like energy can't be created or destroyed, only transferred, right? So you're putting, you're speaking that out into existence and something's going to absorb it. Something's going to, you know, it's going to change something. And you yeah, can talk to plants. You can say nice words to plants. If you say nice words to plants, they grow better. You know that? Not even kidding. Not even kidding. You can, I believe you, it, but. If you tell uh, a plant like you suck, you're tiny, you're never going to grow big. The plant will actually be sh like, it'll, it'll be unhealthier. But if you're like, man, you're such a cool plant. You're dope, dude. Then the the plant's actually going to grow to be a stronger plant. So well, I, that yeah, that's I mean, I've never. But you're speaking that, you're but, speaking about a little bit different of a thing. But I'm like yeah. I'm just corroborating it, saying like voice words do matter. Yeah, words definitely matter, and also vocalization between God and yourself is the only way to build a connection with God. If you yeah. never talk to Him, if you never speak with Him, if you never communicate with Him, then He will never communicate with you. You have to be the facilitator of that conversation and you have to choose you have to choose in yourself and in your own consciousness to con conversate with God because he craves your attention. Everybody watching this, he craves your attention. He wants to spend time with you, he wants to talk to you and he craves your attention because he wants you to fulfill the responsibilities that he has delegated to you. And you, everybody has responsibilities, whether they are great or small. Everybody has responsibilities that God has delegated to you on your path to fulfillment and success. Your path to fulfillment and success, at the end of the day, will only be will only be reviewed by you and God. You and God are the only people who review, who will review your life and your path to fulfillment and success. And whether you choose to be whether you choose to feel fulfilled and feel successful at the end of your life, that that is between you and God and nobody else can give you that fulfillment. Not a single person on this earth will be able to give you that fulfillment. Only God will. And that's, I mean, that's obviously, that's, that's something you hear your entire life. And it's kind of hard because listen, even King Solomon, who was one of the most holy men who ever existed, he even said, that he tried all that. He tried finding fulfillment in women. He tried finding fulfillment in all these things, and he was never able to find it. Um, and you know, it's it's one thing to hear it, and then it's one thing to do a lot of stuff that you think like sleeping with random women, doing drugs, going and partying, like you do all those things that you think are going to give you temporary fulfillment and fun, and then you come at, on, on the other end of it feeling just as empty and sad, and you're like, sometimes okay, emptier. Sometimes emptier. Oftentimes emptier because mm. you you've given parts of yourself away in the process of reach trying to reach temporary happiness um, and done things that you're always going to regret um, and also ignoring your conscience that's telling you not to do these things um, cutting yourself off from God um, and I've done all that I've done all that you know a lot of that and more and uh, it just doesn't really make you any happier. Um, it just leads to freaking destruction. But, uh, but yeah, it's. Yeah. The only yeah. thing that's really like looking back, the only thing that's really made me happier, especially, especially in the last, I mean, I could say a decade. I, and in fact, I will say decade because the only thing that's made me happier in the last decade has been, uh, like a stronger connection with God. Uh, doing these Bible studies now that we're, and now that we're streaming, this makes me super happy. Like I really enjoy doing this stuff um, and spreading the word of God and accepting the word of God and learning from the word of God because it's the only thing that's ever going to bring any of us any happiness or fulfillment or strength or will or warmth or light. Uh, it's the only thing that's going to deliver us from the evil that attempts to corrupt, that forever attempts to corrupt our souls. 
Uh, it's the only thing that's going to save us from that. It's their, our only salvation. And uh, and that's another thing, because uh, kind of on that, do you know how you said, uh, you brought up the Carl Jung quote, uh, which was, modern man can't see God because he doesn't look low enough. Well, the same sometimes, same thing with like feeling satisfied and having purpose, um, which is something that I'm obviously, I mean, every man struggles with, uh, and a lot, some more than others, and some have kind of gone past that and they've really found their purpose. Personally, I'm kind of in a part of my life where I'm I'm I'm, I'm trying to discover all that, and I'm I'm learning just as much as anybody who's watching this. But uh, there was I told you the story of like my some of my happiest moments in my life were like after just like suffering for freaking weeks or just just like hiking for like 40 miles with like a pack on your back, and just going, dude, just Definitely suffering. Dude. Here. And then like the the happiest moment, like I look back and I always remember this one moment where we just got done with the freaking um, Geronimo crawl which nobody's going to know what that is unless they were one five alpha, alpha company and they enlisted in 2014 like it was just a really crappy three day, four day long field off that was just it was just terrible dude like the guy ended up getting relieved whatever so we got done with that i ended up finishing like i ended up finishing in the front of the pack like out of hundreds of people um you know a little humble brag there for a second um but I like after all that, like that was all really terrible. wasn't really happy, but like it was one of the happiest moments of my life. Just was sitting there with my buddies afterwards in a little, it just sitting in our freaking packs in the middle of a basketball court in the it's freaking three a.m. Just covered in sweat, our, my body's cramping up, and you, we we all ordered Domino's, and we just were sitting there eating freaking crappy Domino's pizza and drinking like Sprite and like Dr Pepper and stuff like that. And that was like one of the happiest moments of my life. Would not not necessarily like. But it's just like when I look back and I think of happy moments, that always pops up as one because it's like I just got done. Like I, I felt happier after that than I ever did after a night of drinking or after I ever did sequence some random girl or that I ever did after, you know, just doing anything that like all these moment, all this momentary shit like that brought me more happiness than freaking anything was just look in reflection, you know, in reflection and satisfaction of a job well done, you know, and like, oh, I accomplished that. You know, I'm, I'm with my homies, you know um and and a lot of people uh i wasn't i wasn't really struggling like you don't really struggle for purpose when you're when you're working really hard because you're in it um you know and then that's another thing too like trying to find purpose like that's that's another thing that leads guys our age astray man is just trying to find purpose and nobody's got a freaking purpose anymore um anyway jumping all over the freaking place but well that's kind of like the first thing that i read about uh, responsibility and delineating like if the expenditure of time and energy is beneficial uh, so that delineation of time and energy uh, the two most powerful things in our universe and in our lives how can we use our time and our energy the most effective way possible to do the most good possible for God so that time and that energy needs to be uh, first we need to choose to delineate that time and energy. Then we need to choose to act upon like that delineation that that time and energy would be used for a useful, useful, useful gain and useful um, like productivity. Like once that, once that action takes place, then the responsibility is fulfilled. Yeah. So then, then whatever, whatever it is you've chosen your purpose, whatever you've chosen your purpose to be, and after you put the time in it, put the energy in it, you've chosen to act upon it. Now that's when you get the beneficial gain of it. But in between that time, like nothing's more important than like the vocalization and the communication with God, because he's the only person that will be able to show you what your purpose is. Otherwise you are the, bl it's the blind leading the blind. You're like, Oh, I'm going to get this pinterest inspiration this tiktok inspiration this youtube inspiration no none of that's actually inspiration that's just things that you think look cool or you you envy you're envious of or you're jealous of and that you want in your own life usually materialistic things or status or wealth or fame that you want in your own life so Looking back on your life, what what was like one of the the moments like? Can you can you point back to a moment that you felt like you were on track, like besides now? 
Like you felt like you were satisfied, you were you were fulfilled. Even now, even now, it's. I mean, not. I mean, because I know you're not fulfilled now, but beforehand you had mentioned like now you're you're feeling like you're on a good path. But like beforehand, are there any moments that you felt like you were on a good path? Um, I feel like when I first went to Syracuse, when I first went to Syracuse, and I got like accepted into, um like the new house school, which was the journalism school. And I was first going to play college football after I had, um, after I had done like my postgraduate year at the military Academy, like at that point, like going from us, going from like that, that time where I was like 19 and I was going to school for the first time, and I was going to play football and I was at one of the best schools for journalism in the country and it was power five football. And I was like, Oh, this is sick. Like that. I felt at that time I was like, damn, like I'm actually doing the damn thing. And then I fell into essentially like, I just fell into being like a shithead. Like I was just like drink. We were, dude, we were drinking like every night we were. And that's a, we were smoking all the time. I was only worried about like girls. And then once we got like banned from going out, then I was just like only focused on like having sex and smoking weed and drinking. And like, I didn't, I, and I was like, I didn't do anything in school. I didn't do anything really in football besides work out. And, um, it was just like from then from that point i was like damn like all this stuff that i and that's why i said like your selfish societal like your selfish societal manifestations of what you think you should will and are supposed to be are often not the path that god has designed for you well yeah because that's like that's uh those are all obviously like those are worldly things like uh and well, that's what i thought what it was, they, was gonna be i thought it was gonna be nfl player broadcaster uh, and that's what I was, that's what I wanted to be because that's what I grew up wanting to be. And that's the only thing that I really cared about. But then when I got to that point, I realized, well, I'm not even working enough to care about this stuff. So I'm not even working the way that I would need to work to show that I'm actually caring about this stuff, to show that I actually give a shit about this stuff that I said that I wanted. So, and that was because of a lack of God. I had a lack of God. Like I didn't like at that time, I'm not even sure if I ever prayed. Like, I'm not even sure if I prayed ever, like not beforehand. I obviously prayed before that, but like, I'm not sure if I even had like, I it's definitely not like it is now where for the past like three and a half years, I pray like every day, like, or almost there's been a few days maybe in the past three years where I haven't prayed like a few. And it's because I was so upset. And so, um, I was so, uh, disgusted by myself that I felt that I wasn't even worthy to talk to God. 100% dude. That's really, that's, that's profound that you said that because I feel like that's so, that's so many people that's yeah. been me too. I've been in the same thing. I've, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. So I just, I, for like, like sometimes you just feel like you're so, you're such a deceitful, like sinning, just horrible person that like, you don't, you got, you don't, you don't deserve to talk to God because of how bad of a person you are or how like lazy you are or how, uh, like much of an asshole you are or, um, how sexually immoral you are well yeah just like obviously you don't want to freaking like uh you feel like you might be in a you're kind of in trouble it's like you don't want to like your dad tells you to do something and you're afraid if your dad you know you you know you messed up that day you're afraid that your dad's going to come home and freaking beat your ass and that's it's the like, thing is like god will either give you a path to salvation or a path to death or he will sentence you to death he will send well, yeah you but to obviously death or give you a path to salvation yeah and well it's not like oftentimes it's uh obviously your actions do like, yeah, you're right. But, um, he gives you the path to salvation, but it's, it's, it's not like he puts you on it. Right. He, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't illuminate the world before you, but he shines a lamp at your feet. 
he shows you the next step. He shows you that he shows you small actions that you can take in your right. immediate future. No, right, definitely. And uh, a lot of times, your path to salvation is riddled with suffering and sacrifice and horrible well, grace, things. You, and, grace comes after tribulation. Yeah, yeah true. Yes, like, yes. and you have to endure. You have to endure all the suffering, all the hardship. You have to endure all the negativity and all the horrible things and the horrible tribulations you have to endure if you are a if you are a sinner like all of us are or you are a like big time sinner like some of us are like you will have to endure suffering tribulation and sacrifice so much that you will find that like it says in the book of revelation like you will wish for death but it will always escape you yeah it's like it gets hard. It's so hard, like especially after you, if you, well, after you've lost God or you never had God and you lived a like uh, like a spiritually inept life where you were like devoid of spirituality, devoid of God, devoid of prayer. Like that stuff takes a toll on your soul and takes a toll on your path to salvation. So, so basically, stop stop whining and just start getting motivated. I was freaking um sorry continue I, I, I was, yeah. it just reminds me of this this podcast i listened today too i was going to mention that but um so freaking and you know what it's like and it's just freaking just get get with some motivated dudes like it's with some fucking motivated dudes and it's always easy to sit there and be like oh i'm a piece of crap i don't deserve to talk to god it's like you know, maybe you're all a piece of crap, you know, like I am a piece of shit that, you know, like, but, you know, get some with some freaking motivating dudes who motivate you and freaking bring you up and uh, and stop being a wussy. Like the Bible's freaking hardcore. God's hardcore. Like we're supposed to be freaking hardcore. Right. And uh, and one thing. So if you if you suffer with chronic pain, you understand this. And I kind of view like to your desire to do bad and you're, you're all these negative thoughts is kind of like almost like chronic pain. It's such a horrible life to live sometimes. And you wrote this chronic, this chronic spiritual pain, this chronic inner pain outside the knee pain, whatever. View your freaking pain or whatever hurts you. Just be like, I'm going to create an environment that's inhospitable for you to live in. Like if my knees want to hurt, if, if, if my knees, if, if that stuff inside of me is like, for me, like I relate to chronic pain a lot. And I was listening to this guy who was like, Pat McNamara. If you don't know who Pat McNamara is, look him up, watch his videos. The guy was a freaking Delta Force operator. The guy's an absolute G, freaking badass dude. And he has this major condition, but he's like, I'm going to make that part of me that wants me to be a bitch in an in, inhospitable, in make it live in an inhospitable, envi inhospitable environment. He gives it a name, which is the demon. But like every single day that he that he feels the urge, like that little demon inside of him, that's like, you should sit down and not do anything. You should or it's for this instance, like you should go and you should drink. You should go and you should freaking go sleep with that girl, get a Tinder or whatever. Be like, you know what? I'm just like, no. It's like, you know, you know that you're at war with the flesh. And if you have chronic pain, you're at war with your pain. Um, and kind of treat it as that. You know, be this is freaking be badass, you know, put on the armor of God, you know, the sword of okay. truth or whatever the heck, and just and just freaking just be bad at be a badass about it. It's like no sin. I'm not gonna give you a freaking place to live. I'm gonna make this an inhospitable environment. I'm going to take away all the things in, in my environment that make me want to sin. I'm going to put down my freaking phone. Oh, I want to go eat a cheat. I want to go eat a freaking whole pizza. No, you know what? I know you want a whole freaking pizza, but I'm not going to give you a whole pizza. I'm going to make you eat a, a steak and a salad. You know, um, and the great part about that is too. the great part about that. What you're, what you're saying is too, is that once you've submitted to God and you have created that line of communication and you have suffered and you have sacrificed and you have put yourself in that position, God will take away your pain. He will take away your physical pain. He will take away your emotional pain. It all will be stripped from you. All that pain and suffering will be stripped from you. I don't know, man. I mean, I, I think that, that that does happen, but at the same time, like, I don't know, man, like, following god does not lead to like an easier life all the time like no I, that's not what i'm that's not what i'm saying is that it leads to an easier life it it's much harder to live a life of god than it is to live a life of the flesh and the devil it's much it's much harder to be on that it's the path of god is a narrow is a, one that is str ultra straight and narrow and very hard to stay on and honestly there's not room for everybody on it uh, everybody can't handle it 
And but like I've experienced it myself. I was in chronic pain for 10 years feeling like I can't couldn't breathe. And then after three, now this isn't gonna happen to everybody, but like after three years of like intense like prayer and self-reflection, like all almost all of my and also also other God acting through others, like my physical therapist and whatnot. But like at the end of the day, it was God that took away that pain from me and allowed me to breathe and allowed me to not feel these like nerve pains, like, and to allow like muscles to come back from atrophied states. Um, so like that is 100% God. And like cause a lot of that stuff, I didn't receive any medical help from or medical attention from. And so, I mean, just speaking from experience, like he does take away your pain. Like both when you die and if you live a righteous life and you believe in Jesus Christ and you go to heaven, your pain will be taken away. Just like in this life, if you like pray and ask for the power and the strength and for salvation and to be delivered from evil and to be ripped from corruption and to be favored in your battle with the devil, God will answer your prayers if he will answer your prayers and he will show you in a physical, emotional, and spiritual way that he is answering your prayers. And it takes longer. Uh, it takes longer, it takes shorter times. Like people experience it in different ways, but it does happen and miracles do happen. And he does answer prayers in miraculous ways. Yeah, man, he definitely does. And uh, I mean, I haven't experienced anything as profound as that, but you know, um, I don't know. Hopefully I'm hoping that some, uh, I hope that God takes my knee pain away, but, um, that would be nice. Uh, I don't know, but all right. Do you want to, uh, you end on a lighter note with Jeremiah 18, 18. Yes. A lighter <laughs> note. <laughs> and this is like the Bible's metal, dude. Like people always want to, yeah, this one, this is just a show that like all like, God is like God is love. He shows us how to love and he shows us how to care for one another and how to congregate and love each other who all believe in him. But this is also to show that uh God is not uh is not all forgiving. He doesn't forgive all sin. He yeah. he, he doesn't for, he doesn't forgive he doesn't forgive everything just because you talk you have to act like we read earlier uh, in James one, how your your uh, just your reading and your talking of the Bible is not and his gospel is not going to save you. It has to be your actions, and it can't be your selfish. It can't be actions for yourself. It has to be actions for God and actions uh, for others. Otherwise, God is metal and he holds a grudge. Yeah, and like basically, and he will he will mess your he will mess you up and yeah. like he he does not hold he does not hold back when it comes to when it comes to like the book of revelation he does not hold back when it comes to uh like w noah's ark when when we were reading it in genesis like he does not hold back when people become so uh when people become so sinful that they're beyond saving yep and uh it's just uh yeah Bible super metal. It's really cool. Um, so you don't have to be feminine to be a Christian. Uh, you can be uh, you can be tough, masculine, and uh, and cool. So <laughs> yeah, you can be tough, masculine, and cool. So uh, let's see. Um, this is Jeremiah eighteen eighteen. Uh, Jeremiah persecuted. Then they said, "Come and let us devise plans against Jeremiah." For the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come and let us attack him with the tongue, and let us not give heed to any of his words. Here's the prayer. Give heed to me, O Lord, and listen to the voice of those who contend with me. Shall evil be prepared for good? For they have dug a pit for my life. Remember that I stood before you to speak good for them, to turn away your wrath from them. Therefore, deliver up their children to the famine and pour out their blood by the force of the sword. Let their wives become widows and bereaved of their children. Let their men be put to death. Their young men be slain by the sword in battle. 
Let a cry be heard from their houses when you bring a troop suddenly upon them. For they have dug a pit to take me and hidden snares for my feet. Yet, Lord, you know all their counsel which is against me to slay me. Provide no atonement for their iniquity, nor blot out their sin from your sight. But let them be overthrown before you. Deal, deal thus with them in the time of your anger. So it's a little different than the version you read. I think the version you read was a little bit more crass. But uh, but this one is, um, it's an imprecatory prayer. Like, you know, not everyone can be asking for this. You know, Jeremiah was a squared away dude. He was doing good things. And these guys who were set out against them were yeah. truly evil. We need to people. learn more about uh, about Jeremiah. Because for him to be able to pray um, such atrocity among people who seek to destroy him, um, one, he must be a, like you said, a pretty squared away individual. He must be, a, he must be a, he must've been a pretty good guy. And, um, the people that were, um, trying, were setting snares and setting, dug, digging pits for him. Um, they must've been pretty sacrilegious. They must've not either been directly against the will of God or, um, well, or, so non-believers in god well here's the thing too do you know when it's do you know this the thing that people always like to say like a, a, ve a very common trope in the church which is if god is with me who can stand against me mm -hmm. this is like who can how many of you can actually say you're with god like i can't really say that right now like i'm on the journey i'm just starting i'm not at this point um but like like how many of you can, how many people can actually look at their life and be like, I am living in congruence with God. I am 100% doing what God wants me to do. Like I'm living a holy life. I'm living a good life. I'm doing good things on this earth. Everyone wants to get to that point. It takes a lot of freaking action. It takes a lot of work, but, um, but that's like, who, if God's with me, who can stand against me? It's like, how many people can actually say that they're with God? You know, I don't think as many people would that, that that's that would like to say that. Can actually say that you actually have to be you actually have to be doing the work like jeremiah was to the point where it's like if people's actions if people really are fighting against you you really aren't to blame and you can start in praying imprecatory prayers on them and uh and pray that their whole villages be destroyed well, that's like what we were Which talking cool about effect. earlier that's what we we're talking about earlier is that you know everybody does have uh different everybody does have different responsibilities um to god yeah and to his creation so some people's responsibilities inherently are greater than others. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, just generally, like, if I if you're going out and, and going out and getting blacked out, drunk every night, uh, and uh, and doing drugs and uh, and having sex with random people every night, and uh, and maybe being a homosexual or being, you know, whatever the heck the sins are that you're committing on a daily basis that you're not really trying to fight, it's like you can't really say that you're doing like you're you're doing the work. Like at a certain point, it's like if you want to freaking, you gotta you gotta do the work. Like I'm like we're doing, we're trying walk, to do. Like this you, said, you gotta walk the walk in order to talk the talk. Yeah, like, yeah. Which is what was what good old boy Jeremiah is doing. Um, like, that's what that's. I'm gonna go back to reading this. Is like living by God's word. Remember this, my beloved brethren. Everyone should be quick to listen, but slow to speak and slow to anger, for human anger does not bring about the righteousness of God. Therefore, rid yourselves of everything sordid and of every wicked excess and welcome in all humility the word the word that is implanted in you and is able to save your souls be doers of the word and not just hearers you only deceive who and not just hearers who only deceive themselves be doers of the word and not just hearers who only deceive themselves for anyone who listens to the word and fails to do it is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror. After seeing his reflection, he goes off and immediately forgets what he looked like. And now we all we all deal with that. We all know what we should what we should do, but some but temptation and lust and greed and envy takes over us and we can't seem to stick to what we know it should be done. And it happens to everyone. And it's so hard not to do but if you can if you can look at yourself in the mirror see who you who god has designed you to be and then take the responsibility and take the action that god has bestowed upon you and act in that way 
then you will be so happy and you will find so much fulfillment and success in every aspect of your life. Not well, just spiritual, but physical too. Like you're you you'll make gains in the gym. You'll find um, you'll find the love of your life. You'll find uh you, I mean like, we haven't done we we haven't found the love of our life. I don't know if we can say that people will find that, but um, I I firmly believe that like if you live a righteous righteous life then it even says in the bible that uh i believe it's one of the letters uh like i think it's yeah Peter. You, i mean you're you're right about these things it's just i almost feel like it's like because i definitely haven't done half these things so it's like it's hard for me to be like yeah but you've no, also if you do this if you do this this will happen because it's but like, you've also lived a, you've also lived a very sinful life yeah i know but it's like i think we both have i mean yeah, but yeah, but like probably you more than me. You think so? I'm no so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just don't think there's a we're whatever. I don't think that necessarily we can be like, hey, dude, you're gonna do 100. This is gonna happen to you if you do this because we well, I prefaced it earlier by saying that like that if you sin so greatly, then you will not be saved. Your path to salvation like either will be incredibly hard. Or it will be death. You will die. Yeah. Well, you will which die. Sins with sins. Which sins are those? The deadly sins. The seven deadly sins aren't a thing. I think you're just incorrect about that. But they're not. They don't. It's not mentioned in the Bible at all. But there's like sloth, envy, greed, which we do on a daily. We literally basis. read in the Bible. It said. It said. I forgot which chap, which one it was, but it said. Uh, there are seven deadly sins, nay, but six bring the most, uh, like, bring the most unrighteousness to your soul. But there's like, so the sins that you're referencing, there's the Bible doesn't say like the Bible like oh sporadically mentions seven different sins. That's where it kind of comes from. It's like sloth, envy, greed, pride, which are all things like they're not d deadly because they, you won't enter heaven. They're deadly because many other things manifest from them, like. You know, like most sins and most bad things manifest from these seven different character traits, basically. Um, like I, fully, I don't know. I fully believe that there are that there are deadly sins that one cannot recover from. So, do you think so? If the seven deadly sins are like that, then sloth is one of them. So, I mean, how many times have we sat around and not done shit for a day? Yeah, but you can be you can be uh, lazy in the day but if you are lazy in the life like you can be lazy in the day sure but then being lazy in your life being 80 years old and having done nothing with your life and never have worked never have done anything never have yeah. prayed never have done anything is a completely different story so how so about let's pride? not conflate let's not conflate like like uh what well, even if it's even if it's 15 years say somebody has done 15 well, years what about, what about pride? activity don't conflate that with 50. what about pride what about the one of the seven deadly sins of pride but well, we'll have to we'll have to find exactly what it says but i think the deadly deadly sins are more like uh are more like um like sodomy like sodomy murder like un unrightful unrightful killing um well, where are you getting this from because there are there are a bunch of sins like because there's like sodomy like if you sleep with a man your blood will be before you but they're the only the only sin that i can i can say in the bible like those are all obviously really bad i don't think if you do that like i don't think if you i don't know i'm not gonna say like you just if you if you if you want to know this kind of stuff read the bible um, everyone has kind of their differing opinion. It did say, it did say like, if you like, like, like your life becomes forfeit. Remember like when I was reading that, like if you sleep with like a married woman, your life becomes forfeit. Yes. But a lot of the, but it says that about a decent amount of different sins. It doesn't just say it about like a specific thing. But what I'm why, saying is that your life does become forfeit. Your life but that is, is forfeited. But the reason why it's saying, but the reason why it's saying your life becomes forfeit is because if something happens to you, that's not, that's on you. Like if, if if you sleep with a married man's wife and that married man kills you, that guy's kind of in the right to kill you. Yeah, but that's all. But just because he kills you, that's also 
an act of, from God. Yeah, well, yeah, but I mean, like, it doesn't mean that your eternal soul is damned to hell. But if you never, but if you, if you take that sinful life and you never, and you never work, that's why sloth that's, is, that's why well, that's sloth fine. is a that's, deadly sin too, is because if you're too lazy to repent, then you will never find, you never, you will never find salvation. So that's the thing is just in, in general, repent because like any sin, if you live any sinful, if, if you're doing anything and you don't repent, you're, I mean, it's, you're not repenting. You, I mean, to, regardless to receive salvation, you need to repent regardless of your sins. Like you can be living just a normal freaking life and be sinning here and there. And as long as you don't repent, your sins still aren't like you, you haven't been forgiven. You need to re actually repent. You can't that's just. Why, that's why, like I, like, I always say in all of my prayers, and, like, I've said it in pretty much all of my prayers, or we've only done, we only have two streams up, but I'm pretty sure in both of them, I'm not sure if I prayed in both of them. I think you may have prayed in both of them, but always in my prayers, and always what I say is asking to be delivered from evil, to be forgiven, and for the power to forgive, and to, like, to be, a, like, to forgive yourself and to be forgiven by God for your sins and for your moral infidelity. Yes. Like, you have to. And like, that's yeah, probably I, why sloth is part of it is because if you're too lazy to go to suffer, if you're too lazy to suffer for what you have done, for the sins that you have done, if you're too lazy to suffer and you're not suffering nearly as much as Jesus did being crucified, like, that's that was like the ultimate sacrifice and the ultimate suffering, giving his life for our sins. So if you're not if you're not willing to suffer a little bit, or suffer even all suffer even a, what might seem like a lot to find salvation, then you're probably not worthy to receive. God. I mean, it's that's not something for me to decide, but that's only for Jesus to decide because He is the Judge that sits at the right hand of God. But, but that's what I'm saying. It's just like we, we're definitely not arbiters here. Like we definitely can't be like, "Hey, dude, you're." I don't no, know. Only the coin does that. <laughs> yes, like literally only only the, the animal, truth. only the all-knowing coin that we possess. But yeah, I just don't think that we can necessarily be freaking coming from such a place of authority. I don't know. Um, but well, I don't think we are coming through from a place of authority. We're just coming from uh, a place of uh, ex like like experience with it. Basically, what I'm saying is, I don't think you can be coming from such a place of authority. You sound like you're coming from a place of authority right now. This whole time. I am the supreme uh, authority of earth, uh, not of heaven, but of you earth. are God's favorite person. Yes. Yeah. And I think that might be considered pride, but uh, I don't know. And it's just, you know, hey, whatever. Um, but, you know, I think you might be indulging in one of those sins that you consider deadly, but, you know. Well, 100%. But, uh, but so you're going to hell, boy. Well, one hundred percent. But that's that's the point. Is that like everybody? But I'm just. I, and I didn't say but that. I'm not. I'm not prideful because I'm just being truthful. I'm just. I, I am God's favorite person, and I, I am. Being truth. I am being truthful. But also, I did. I also didn't say that. Like, like with the deadly sins. Like I prefaced it earlier by saying you can be saved. It's going to be a lot harder. I'm glad that you. I'm glad that I, John Sanders told me that I can be saved. You can be saved, but. It, but your life, like I said, your life does become forfeit. So, like, if you choose not to do anything to act upon it, your life does become forfeit. Your life is up in the balance. Your life can your life can be taken from you, and your eternal like chance to be saved can be taken from you. But that's what it's. But that's what it's saying. It's. But the thing is, when it says your life is forfeit, it doesn't mean like your eternal existence. It's saying life is in like your actual like life, like your, your living body, like. Like your life is forfeit if you fucking die. Like you, you, you're dying because, like, if I go and screw some guy's wife, if I get killed, that's on me. Like God's not going to protect me from that. I did a really sinful thing. You know, if I go sleep with, if I go live a sinful life, I've, I'm forfeiting my life. God's not going to protect me on this earth. Okay, well, but we're not talking that, about, but we're not necessarily talking about the, like, eternal, uh, the eternal consciousness that your soul possesses. Like, I mean, I don't think I think those are two separate things. Your flesh and your soul. That, but I think that your that's flesh. We've been talking, and that's what we've been talking about. We, so we're talking now about your human life because that's yes, what you're referencing right now. But, you, but you're referencing things that are talking specifically just about hu your human life. Yeah. But you were saying your eternal soul. 
I'm just saying that I don't think it's that I don't I'm just saying I don't think that there's you're not gonna just because you freaking you know I'm just saying I don't think that we're in a place to say hey if you freaking do one of these seven deadly sins you're forfeiting your 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 soul I don't know I, think I didn't that, say you're forfeiting your soul I said you're forfeiting your life yes you're but you're saying you're, you're forfeiting you're, your human life okay because it sounded like you were saying on the other end of that that your eternal soul as well like one of the seven deadly sins. Yeah, I was saying with your seven deadly sins, your life, but you can run it, run back the tape, run it back. Dude, I'm gonna said, run it back, I, and then you're gonna look like I said, a fool. I said, said your life. Like I said your life. Right? I said your life becomes forfeit. I said your life becomes forfeit. Like but you're conflating life and soul. No, I'm not. I'm literally. I've been separating the two the entire man. time, and I separated it in my writing. Man, you straight conflating right now. No, you're conflating because you're not listening to what I'm saying. You're a little conflationary doofus. No, you're just getting a little jealous because uh, yeah, you have, you have a bit of envy right now. No, dude, I think that you're having. I think that you're having a. Spirit you're a little of bit pride. envious right now because of how much God favors me. <laughs> I think you have a sort of pride and retardation. Is I think retard is one of the one of the seven deadly sins. Retardation. I think you're that. I think you're freaking in the retard juice right now. Uh, I think you're just envious of uh, that you are uh, living a life that is only going towards eternal damnation of your soul and your life has become forfeit. I know. <laughs> All those things are completely true. I'm not God's favorite person like you, all right? And I know that. So I'm not going to be telling people, hey, don't be doing this because this, you know? Well, I don't, I don't, I don't think do it's that. a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing to tell people not to 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 not be sin or to be to not be. I don't think it's a bad thing to tell people to not be sinful. No, but it's hard because it's like if a homeless man shows up to me, and don't tell piss me, on stream, you weirdo. Dude, I can piss on stream. <laughs> dude, at least fucking turn your mic off, you weirdo. I can piss on screen, but uh, I'm peeing on the side so you can't really hear it. Here, God, I'm you're so freaking weird. I'm just going to keep talking so that the camera stays on me the entire time. Uh, yeah, that's a weird thing to do, brother, uh, especially when we're on a Bible stream to just start pissing. But uh, but yeah, I, I've been and we can be funny about that. We can be funny about the stuff too. We've already we've already said that we're not perfect people. Obviously, most like a lot of the stuff that we're saying is we're being facetious and we're being funny. But like at the same time, it's not a bad thing to tell people not to live a sinful life. Like obviously, everybody's going to live a sinful life, but to tell people not to to try to like free yourself from sin that's not a bad thing to do that's not a bad thing to do whatsoever and anybody who reads scripture or reads the bible or Whatever, read, read, I, read, read I, I don't really care that much text, about this, but you are coming from a place where you're like like look what i'm doing look what i did look what i'm doing this yeah this because that's the only thing i have to go off of but it's like if a homeless what man else, what else me, am I go off of? Am I going to go off of somebody else's experience and try to tell from somebody else's experience or somebody else's point of view? Because I couldn't do that. I wouldn't be able to do that because I'm not living their life. That's not the like. That's not the life that I'm living, and that's not the life that I've lived. So the only the only pieces of advice that I have that I, that I can draw from are things that have have happened in my own life. So I don't see your point with that because I think I can tell people tr to try not to live a sinful life and to try to get build a closer connection with God because that's important. And the fact that you're saying don't say that seems actually sacrilegious to say that, oh, you shouldn't be the one telling them to do that because why can't I be the one telling them to do that? No, I'm just saying it seems like you're coming from a place of a little bit more authority than you actually have. That's all I'm saying. I mean... Why can't I have authority? I do have authority. Because you have no authority. I do have authority. I have authority over my own life, and I have authority over this stream. You don't have it. This is my channel, buddy. This is our channel, you retard. Uh, no, it's it's my channel. I own. See, I have the password to the channel. See, that's that's a selfish and societal manifestation of what you currently believe you think should and could have. No, but I think in those reality, are, that's just word soup that doesn't mean anything. And then there's a second thing 
where <laughs> I'm just messing, dude. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, pulling, I'm just yanking your chain, dog. But like, all I'm saying is that like, there's, there's nothing wrong with uh, like we're dude, we're literally reading the Bible to help people. So like, yeah, we're learning, but we can also, we can also help from our experience. Just because, just because our experience may not be as uh, profound or as um, sharp and like as acute as some other people's are uh, who have lived longer and more fulfilling lives through God doesn't mean that we don't have something to offer. So like, like I, I don't really see the point of not, of not talking from a place of authority, especially as somebody who's always been in like a leadership role and almost every like almost every portion of my life. So, so here's like, the thing is, is authority. So my, and that's just, so I was just kind of fucking around, but you brought up that point. So, but authority isn't something that you give yourself. I know it's something authority that is something, pointed to you. A, so authority is something that's established through a foundation of actually living it out. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying is like, uh, yeah. And I've lived it out. In one way or another, I have lived it out. That's fine. Whatever. Anyway, like maybe it's not. It's not to the point of, oh, I'm some fifty-five-year-old Delta Force operator who's gone through a lot of shit. I'm not denying that that person doesn't have a right to speak their, like, to speak their mind and to share their experiences. Everybody, you can learn something from everyone. Yes, I I do agree. And I do agree. Um, my only, but I'm just saying it was coming across as a little bit, a little, a little bit uh, hard line, a little bit, a little bit too preachy. But it doesn't fucking matter. I was, I was mainly, I mean, I was mainly, I was mainly just messing with you, dude. Part of the thing is we are preaching. Part of it, kind of. But I mean, it's like, I don't know. I don't think, I right, whatever, dude. I don't, I, I don't. I'm not even going to talk on this because I, I, I'm a, I am a piece of shit. So I can't even like. I'm just fucking with you. I, I definitely, I, but I think that's, I think that's a decent, I think that's a decent point because like people do think that way. People are like, Oh, well, who is this guy to tell me what to do or, or to tell me what they've gone through to show, to try to help me. Who are you to do that? It's like, well, I'm just another guy who's, who's currently, meandering my way through this plane of existence like with the rest of us like i'm just another guy who uh wants to be better and searches for for fulfillment through god and so my experience are they as profound as somebody who's three twice three times my age and have i accomplished something have i accomplished like worldly tasks that are the same as somebody twice three times my age or even my age uh maybe not but do i still have experience real life experiences and uh real true profound experiences that can be shared to help folks yes and boom that you're, that's that's god's favorite child that you're that that, that just that, that you guys are listening to right but actually, no, I'm just messing. I, uh, <laughs> I mean, it does. It, it ain't easy. It ain't easy. Uh, being God's favor, man. It's a lot of responsibility. Um, being chosen by God directly is not. Uh, that's a big. I just like to uh, thank the academy, and uh, <laughs> mainly God and Jesus Christ and all of His archangels for. Uh, and, and your uh, mother, you forgot to. You got forgot to thank your mother. Oh well, I'm not done with my speech. Um, oh. Obviously, my without my mother, who has fa single-handedly facilitated my relationship with God, um, couldn't be more thankful to her, and you know the rest of my family as well, and also thankful to the hardships and the hard times, uh, because without those hardships and that suffering, uh, never would have been able to experience any of the salvation. Because without sacrifice, suffering, and surrender, and without forgiveness and love, you will never be able to flourish gracefully and empathically. Because you need to have that feeling of despair, 
always within you because you know how easy it is to succumb to sin in an action. You know how easy that is to sin and not repent and to be lazy. But without that suffering, that sacrifice, that forgiveness, that love, that surrender, you will never feel grace. You will never feel the grace that comes after tribulation. I'm done. No, you're Don Sanders. But, uh, yeah, well, all good things, man. You got to take some freaking ivermectin, dude. I feel like there's some parasites in you that are kind of messing you up, dude. I don't know, dude. I feel I feel very clear and... Uh, no, you sound very clear. You, you're very verbose and articulate. Yeah, and I feel, I feel great, actually. And maybe I just need to uh, inject more parasitic things inside of me because no, dude, what you need is what you need is can, God back. favors Fate. me God favors me so it probably just shoots them right out of my body one second I'll be right back I'm gonna show you something But hey, you guys tell us in the comments. This is not medical advice, but you, you should take that? you should take this. What does that go in your fucking ass? What is that? <laughs> yeah, dude, I put this whole thing in my butthole. No, I. Uh, this is just it's a it's you, you, you. There's measurements, and you just put it in your mouth, swallow it, dude. It's like little. This is this is the freaking this is magic right here, dude. I was pooping out worms a couple weeks ago, or not even a couple weeks ago, like a week ago. <laughs> I ate some bad freaking carp. Yeah, bro. People in the comments, people in the comments are going to be like, yeah, that Seth guy is a horrible human being. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I never claimed to be otherwise. But uh, anyway, it's it's uh, it's safe for horses. Um, yeah. Dude, we're definitely getting a ban for you showing that. I don't know. I think that uh, well, we did. We definitely we banned the other one, the the first one. I don't know. I think we we're gonna get this week. If we get any more viewers, we're gonna get banned eventually for something. Dude, I can't believe we had as many viewers as we did. Yeah, about two hundo, man. That's crazy. Yeah, that's we actually have a nuts. platform. <laughs> dude, that's actually nuts. Yeah, we have a platform, dude. Wait, so do we have any? I wonder if we have any like comments on any of these. I didn't. I didn't see any. But maybe. Wait, somebody said, to accomplish great things, we must not only act, but also dream, not only plan, but also believe. You cannot connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that all the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. This God. approach has never let me down, and it has made all the difference in my life. Steve Jobs. Hey. And then somebody, and then somebody said, "Best stream." <laughs> Which one was that? Was that the first best one? Best stream. <laughs> was that the first one that we were on? And then this one said, the, the, well, "Some guy said, you guys are great. This was hilarious and informative. Good stuff. Hell yeah, brother." What's his name? What's the name? I'm gonna Caesar. Hey Caesar, thank you very much for that, dude. We love Thanks, you, my brother in Christ. That's what I'm talking about, dude. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Dude, we're getting fun. Dude, this is sick, dude. We're getting uh we're getting uh inner what do they call it? Interactions. Yeah, dude. I'm gassed right now, dude. Oh, I want to go freaking deadlift, dude. I want to go hit some freaking deads, bro. Dude, don't do that, dude. Your knees can't handle that. Oh, uh, anything's possible through the Lord who strengthens me. Yeah, <laughs> good point. Dude, that is sick, bro. My phone. Oh, my computer's about to die. You should probably plug it in. I'm sorry, I peed on stream, guys. Dude, you should. Uh, you should start. So uh, dude, we we need to start replying to these people. Yeah, I will. I will. After actually, I'm gonna. I, I'll I'll reply after the video. One second. I'm gonna go plug this in. I'm actually just gonna move my computer. Bro, that is freaking lit, brother.
Yo, dude, that's dude. lit. This is fun. This is pretty, this is pretty funny, dude. That people are especially pretty sick. I wonder how people are finding this. Not easily. <laughs> yeah, not easily. <laughs> Definitely not easily. That's for damn sure. Not easily. But you said I don't got traps. Look at that. Look Bro, at your that. traps are like your traps are like this big, my brother. Nah, dude, way bigger than yours. Purport, I have high muscle insertions. What you know about them high muscle insertions? Bro, he says bigger, yours is bigger than mine. I weigh an extra hundred pounds more than you, brother. Yeah, and you still have tiny baby boy, femboy traps. Dude. <laughs> yeah, hey, little, take that back. The little sissy femboy traps, brother. Brother, I'm like a foot taller than you and a hundred pounds more than you. you yeah, you're to, not immune to buckshot. You need to learn bro. your place. Your learn your place amongst the plebeians. Thank God guns existed because that extra height just gives me extra service area to shoot you. <laughs> you can't not say me. that. <laughs> you're under indictment of a felony. Stop it! You're getting a screen. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the prosecution doesn't hope the prosecution doesn't get a hold of this. Ooh. That'd be bad news, dude. Anyway, that's that's all jokes and satire. Uh, but should we uh should we end it off with a prayer here? You go. All right, name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for another day allowing us to read your word and learn from your word. Please, Lord. Do not only let us hear and read your word, let us act on your word. Lord, we ask all of our viewers that they find some sort of either joy or humor or positive energy um, and positive motivation from our stream. Lord, we love all the people who view our stream, and we only wish the best for them. Lord, we ask that you continue to shine your light on us, and Lord, we ask, uh, we ask that we lift our light to you and for you to make our light brighter. Lord, we also ask that you deliver us from evil and you continue to rip the chains of corruption from our soul. Lord, you, we ask that you give us the power to forgive and to repent. Lord, we ask that you allow us to forgive both ourselves and others. Lord, we ask for the health of our flesh and our spirit. Lord, we ask for the, for the health of our country as it goes through these trying times. Lord, we ask that you, for the health of our viewers, if any of them are going through anything struggling with their health, both mentally, uh, physically, and spiritually. Lord, we ask you help pray for little baby Max um, going through this uh, unjust and unright diagnosis. And Lord, we ask for your love and for your grace. Because it is the most beautiful thing and the most beautiful feeling to feel those things within us. Lord, thank you for another day. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. All right, let's freaking get this stream ended. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for watching. We love you. Thanks, Caesar, and the other person who commented. Uh, we love you. Yeah, we love the engagement. Let let us know what you want to see from us. Uh, if there are any specific chapters you want us to read, um, don't forget to like and subscribe on the videos. Um, comments help the algorithm. Um, so if you want to get this stream out to more people, just like, comment, subscribe. Also, um, if you want to be a guest on the stream, hit yeah. us up. Hit yeah. us up. We'll throw you as a guest on the stream, dude. We'll, we'll, we'll do pretty much anybody as long as you're not all, unless you're not all weird about it. Yeah, we'll, we'll have probably have to pre-screen you uh, before we put you on the stream um, so you don't say anything retarded um, like we do. Um, That's our job. Yeah, yeah, our job is to be retarded. Um, 
but yeah, we would love to have some of you guys on and um, let us know what you want to see more of. If you want to see uh, us berate more Tinder girls. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Or this is basically, just yeah, just, just let us know. Engage with us. You know, this is the beginning. You know, you guys are in this journey with us. Just freaking. Yeah. So we don't really even know what we're doing. So, um, just let us know what you want to see. If you want to see like some in, if you want to see some like real life content, we could make that happen too. Like like some IRL stuff, like doing stuff around town. Uh, we could do that. Uh, yeah. Just let us know what you want to see because uh, we're looking to continue on this journey. Um, and, you know, God bless right. everyone. God bless you. Love you guys. Bye.